wake of President Biden's meeting with China's president, we turn now to a story about the big increase in Chinese migrants coming through the U.S. border down in Mexico. Border Patrol agents arrested more than 24,000 Chinese people for crossing the U.S. southern border illegally over the past year through September. That's more than 10 times higher than the previous year and part of the overall rise in illegal border crossings that has made headlines. Elizabeth Palmer shows us why the Chinese migrants are willing to risk everything for a chance to make it to America. A group of migrants struggle through the rain and mud of the Panamanian jungle toward the U.S. border. <laughs> Weiwei Wang is one of them. I'm surviving on chocolate bars, he says, and running out of drinking water. He videoed the whole grueling trek undertaken by people from all over the world, including recently a record number from China. Since January, border officials have processed more than 10 times as many Chinese migrants as last year. A surge of people with their hopes crushed by China's weak economy, repression and corruption. The government wanted my family's land, Chen Yixiao explains, and he's got video of what he says are thugs sent to beat them up. At the border, American volunteers help out the new arrivals. Samuel Schultz. We're used to seeing border crossers here, Central Americans, Mexicans, trying to avoid the border patrol. And here we have this giant mass of Asians coming in saying, please arrest me. Where's, where's the guy who's going to arrest me? The route is an open secret, first from China to Quito in Ecuador, which Chinese can enter without a visa, and then onward with detailed online advice. In this video, for example, a guide shows Quito Airport on Google Maps. If you land at night, he says, don't go outside. Next morning, catch the bus to Tolkien and carry on north. The online cartoons make it look easy. It's not. So it's very, very dangerous. Immigration lawyer Shaoshang Wang represents Chinese migrants in the U.S. They could be killed, they could be raped, they could be uh, robbed. It's just really, really risky. I keep warning people, don't come this way. The poor rural town of Changla in China's southeast is famous for the number of migrants who've left from here for America. But for most, the price, more than $5,000, is just too high. One local woman who scrapes by selling secondhand textiles told us, my brother and his family left years ago. Of course I want to go too, but wishing won't do it. I need cash. On the U.S. border, more and more have found the cash to gamble on a new life, even though Attorney Wang says about 30% will be deported. But 70 percent of the people uh, would be allowed to settle down in the U.S. In the meantime, the U.S. economy is, uh, is growing very fast and a lot of employers uh, need uh, uh, low pay employees. So that's a kind of a win-win situation. And the biggest win of all is to have left China far behind. Hallelujah. For CBS Mornings, I'm Elizabeth Palmer in Tokyo. It is shocking how yeah. far they've come. And, you know, Mark Esper was here yesterday, the Secretary, former Secretary of Defense, talking about how China's weak economy, high youth unemployment, that's what's driving a lot of these people here. It's a huge number, 24,000. Those are the ones that turned themselves in or were captured, and you wonder how many were not. Uh, and that's only one part of the, the, of the border situation. You've got Congress working on the Santos question, and you wonder, could they pay right. some attention to what's going on down there? We right. need a lot more of all, everything, right? There's more enforcement. Okay. There's more judges needed. There's more legal pathways needed. All of it, it's a mess, and right meanwhile, our, our mind is elsewhere. You're right about that, Tony. People are yeah. coming from farther and farther.